hello, welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. This episode is brought to you by Scent Bird. a very special guest tonight. Please welcome for the first time musician and artist known as Gothic Tropic aka Cecilia de la Perudi. Did I say it right? Yes. (laughs) Thanks for coming. Yes, of course. We always love musicians here. We love it. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. Um, you were highly recommended by Sarah Weinschenk. Sarah's great. Are you guys buddies or what? I, yeah, we met once and hung out once, and I think she's great, and she's my friend now. You hung out once, and then you, how did you know? I got a good vibe. Just the first interaction you knew? Yeah. How, you just, she was so po- like you, So positive, yeah. so hospitable. Had a lot of weed. Um, I w- felt uh, an affinity towards her immediately. Awesome, yeah. Sort of kinship. That's how I discovered you because I was looking on her Instagram and she has pictures of you and I'm like, oh, I thought you were a comedian, but then I looked on yours and it said musician. So let's get into it. Okay. Yeah, let's get into, where are you originally from? I'm from Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I was born in New Jersey. Okay. But I moved here when I was 12. Mm-hmm. So I feel like an LA native. I went to Hollywood High up here. Oh, right up the street. Yep. You went to Hollywood High? Yes. Dude. Yeah. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of skaters, a lot of fights. Oh my god. A lot gosh. of, um, uh, I was in the, uh, performing arts magnet. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So a lot of uh, acapella singing group um, stuff. I think you're our first person um, from Hollywood High. We've had over 100 guests. You're wow. our first one. Yeah. Yeah. Were you in the uh, marching band at all? Or? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I did play the flute. All um, right. All right. I could have gone that route. Um, but no, yeah, it was, it was the nerdy... Like it was called the elite choir. Okay. So, Did you have a, uh, to audition, try out for that? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, God. Oh, I think the director, the music director, just had me run through some some stuff. scales and some standards in you, front of the class, and, I and just, then you were in. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And then when did I guess, you? I think that was my first audition. Is that? Yeah. And then I want to get into your other auditions though, okay. as well, because you have a like a whole trajectory of auditions, right? <laughs> yeah. Like being a like a, a musician and all. And like yeah, a lot of different kind of auditions actually. Like, what do you mean by that? <sighs> well, as an artist or creator, or any kind of in in like especially performance, mm-hmm. you sort of cast a wide net. Uh, <laughs> so I've gone out on like VO auditions auditions i suppose and Mm -hmm. then like uh acting auditions yeah uh and then uh music auditions hired gun stuff like that yeah yeah and that's crazy um do you have do you have like a a manager or agency you're with like yeah and then how did you how did you obtain all those things just kind of like going out yourself and then you meet people yeah um how did that happen I mean, for the last 10 years, nine years, I've been pushing Gothic Tropic as my solo project and then just posting like dumb videos. And then people, it's just been product of not saying no, I think. It's just like, hey, do you want to, 
we're looking for a real musician. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah. And then how'd you come up with the awesome name Gothic Tropic? That's your Instagram as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, Gothic Tropic. It's underscore, right? Gothic underscore Tropic? No, just, I got the Gothic Tropic. Oh, you tropic. got the Gothic Tropic. I got Gothic Tropic. So Gothic space Tropic. Yeah. How'd you come up with that name? Um, Originally, it was, uh, well, I just thought it was, a f- it was a joke. It was my, like, solo project that I could write my own music while I was playing for other people. And I actually didn't think I was going to take it seriously it was more like a catharsis moment um but gothic is i grew up listening to 45 grave and bauhaus mm-hmm. and also was getting into like west african guitarists yeah. is susie like, in the banshees gothic yeah yeah okay i would say she deserves that yeah i bought, I bought one of her tapes uh, at sam goody's this is like in the 90s yeah i didn't know what i was buying yeah, she's she's yeah. a she's an yeah. iconic goth yeah, queen. So, yeah, Susie and the Banshees. Yes. Um. What uh? What about like Echo and the Bunny? They wouldn't be gothic, mm, would they? They're more like no. new a- uh like new wave kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop, I I love them, pop, but yeah, yeah. I was a huge Echo and the Bunny. Oh movie. yeah, They're huge. That's yeah. my karaoke. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. They were awesome. Ooh, they just stick it. Yeah, and just their songs are. I mean, no, was. Echo, their drum machine? The, uh, I heard that. Oh. Echo or either the Echo was their drum machine? I don't know. That's folklore. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it is. But I just remember I had surf wax and I, I wrote Echo and the Buddy Men on my window oh. growing up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The songs to learn and sing, that album, it's like sil- yeah. it's like silhouettes of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, mm. I, I grew up with all that stuff. And yeah. give give us a couple more uh, gothic, uh, just, uh, this is interesting as far as... Uh, Christian like, Death, you remember Christian Death? No, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> don't. Cra- yeah. don't. Okay, don't listen don't. to Christian Death. <laughs> yeah. Joy Division. Joy Division, sure. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, so The Joy- Cure... That's a little bit more like mainstream goth, but also just I damn mean, good band. Yeah, I mean Robert Smith. I mean, yeah, damn good band. Yeah. So that, mm-hmm. and then also yeah, like Fela Kuti and mm-hmm. Basai Koyate, and like a lot of the yeah. more like st- uh, Strat playing. Um, and so Tropic. <laughs> so oh, I just was, got it now because you're combining the sort two of genres. Sounded like that when I was starting because I was just, I just looping on a guitar. I was mm-hmm. just looping. How did you loop? Um, because there's certain machines. I have machines that loop. But how were you looping a pedal? Like by a yeah, pedal? with one of those like black and red Boss pedals. Yeah, and mine always beeped on the tempo. <laughs> it's this horrible beep. Yeah. Even if the tempo knob is all the way down, for some reason I could every time I every time I trigger a new chord layer layer of it the beeping would just get louder and louder sorry roland but yeah yeah uh, yeah i have a lot of roland stuff it's great but i just was like this is embarrassing so maybe i'll get a band right oh because you're doing it all you're like a one-person band you're you're doing you're looping stuff yeah okay that's how it started how did you get into a guitar like Mm. Yeah, because you said flute in high school, flute, and then how'd you get into the guitar? Yeah, uh, guitar. I think I started picking up in. Well, I learned how to play a Cranberry song at camp. Damn good band. When I was yeah. maybe fourteen. Yeah. And then um, was it zombie? Was it, zombie it was no. Yeah. What was it? It was their that was their one album, the white cover of them on the couch. I think, yeah. That it was, was a- it was a deep cut because the counselor who taught it to me was like, you know, like, uh, like hacky sack master like, master. <laughs> yeah. And Did he have the stalls where he she could, was? She was. Oh, a, it was a she. Yeah. She could stall it on her foot like this, and then bring yeah. it back up. And so she she had the deep cuts, and it was a song that only had like two notes, mm-hmm. and it blew my mind. I felt so cool. And yeah. then, um, and then actually, I didn't even get back into it until high school, and I was in a punk band. Oh, cool! What actually, just rehearsing up the street here on you know pots and pans for cymbals. Whoa! I mean, 
And we, um, when Knitting Factory was just up here. Yeah, right there on Hollywood Boulevard. I used to go yeah. there. Yeah, for yeah. shows and everything. Yeah. We played there a bunch. Yeah. You so, know what it is now? It's a Muji or a Muji, Mo, Mujo. Oh, yeah. Muji Japanese clothing store. Right. But that used to be the. Next to the. S- the Subway and. Uh, the Subway um, and the Rite Aid or CVS. whatever. CVS. CVS. Yeah, CVS. Yeah. And there's a shoe store there too now. Yeah. Yeah. And we would just. I and I was I was too young to know that like just g- getting drunk just didn't mean drinking an entire 40 of Mickey's. That's not Damn, I used to drink those too. We used to or the yeah. grenades, the Mickey grenades. Yeah. Yeah. That's not correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we would go to shows in that state just on a 40? Yeah, the addicts like just like just yeah. messed up. We played shows. Yeah. How did you? How did you? How did you book shows at the Knitting Factory? Did you just go up to the window? Because because <laughs> I, I was in a hip hop band in the early two thousands. That I went to uh, gave them my demo, and I talked to the. Pr- Remember they had the office there. I yeah. I just talked to someone at the office. Go hey, can we open up I for was, Ugly Duckling or someone? Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah 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 yeah. I was not interfacing with promoters at that point. I our drummer Kirk Podell, uh, he was he was the businessman. So he used the booker. Yeah. Okay. He got us gigs. Okay. We opened for Dr. No there. Really? Yeah. Who's the lead singer's name? Brandon? What was mm. his name? Uh, Dr. No. God, I forgot that guy's name. The lead singer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're a popular punk band. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually worked in a rehab uh, as a tech, and he was one of the, uh, like, counselors Mm. yeah so i'm like because the people staying there were like hey you were because they're like ex-punkers they're like you're that guy from dr no i love the like hollywood punk scene back when i was 16 because it was like when the bad brains was still playing yeah yeah we had um god i have to do that we have to do the ad read so no a word from our sponsor sent bird now a word from our sponsor scent bird scent bird is a luxury fragrance subscription service for perfumes and colognes scent bird has more than 600 designer brands for you to choose from each month not sure what type of scent you're looking for sort and find your new fragrance by brand style occasion season and more with Scentbird, you can have a great taste and mix up your fragrance routine without breaking the bank. Whether it's Versace, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Scentbird.com keeps you smelling good month after month after month. My personal favorites, I like in no particular order. I like the Burberry. The Brit Rhythm smells fantastic. I like Clinique. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Clinique Happy, I love. Dolce and Gabbana Intenso, check that one out. You won't be disappointed. And Hugo Boss, just different. So check those out. Those are my favorite, but there are many, 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 many more. Go to scentbird.com slash Stevie. Use my code Stevie, S-T-E-E-B-E-E, for 30% off your first month. Again, go to scentbird.com slash Stevie. Use my code S-T-E-E-B-E-E for 30% off your first month. And with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, you can get 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 for your first fragrance. Again, and with an exclusive offer just for our listeners, that's you, hopefully, you could get 30% off your first month today. That's only $10 off your first fragrance. Again, I'm going to spell it out for you. That's S-C-E-N-T-B-I-R-D dot com slash S-T-E-E-B-E-E for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just $10. Let me just do that one last time and I'll let you all go. Again, that's S C. E N T B I R D dot com slash S T E E B E E for you to try your first perfume or cologne for just ten dollars. Sign up today. You won't be disappointed. Smell fresh like me.
Mm. And we're back. I was just going to add on to what you're saying. I dig the Bad Brains too, uh, but we've um, the Dead Kennedys are, are you? Yeah, okay? and they're practicing. Um, no, they're in San Francisco. Because we had DH. DH was yeah, here. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so DH is. Uh, I wanted more punk people, but he um, he um, actually gave me a skateboard and he signed it. But uh, that meant a lot. It's uh, it's near the piano. Oh, you can't see it now, but oh. it's, uh, I'll show you after. Cool. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm like like I. That's why um, this platform is for all different types of musicians. Yeah. And genres and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so when did you? How long did you have a go with your punk band? And when did you guys disperse? And when did you start doing just Gothic Tropic? Um, that was I was seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. And then after that, I started playing guitar for a band called Rumspringa. Mm -hmm. And that's about when I started Gothic Tropic and just as a solo project. Rumspringa is like the Mormon thing. Right? Yeah, uh, Amish. Amish yeah. So right. it's an Amish band? No. No, yeah. The name was inspired by, oh, the, by the Amish. Okay, yeah. yeah. It, it's when it's, it's the... Is it a debaucherous holiday? chapter that teenagers can go out into the world, the and real world outside of their uh, little community yeah. and experience real life and see if they want to jump ship or not. Yeah. Um, I've seen documentaries yeah. about that. It's really fascinating to me. Yeah. It's like almost you're in a different time period because they're wearing pilgrim gear. And yeah. They're Luddites, like, right? Yeah. It's really odd. Yeah. So what was the, what was the reason for the name for the band? What was Joey's? I think he just liked this the spirit of adventure aspect of Rum Spring. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was, was it punk though, or was it no, his it's it was more it was him and Itaru and um, it was so cool. It's like if Black Keys and like Alabama Shakes just all came yeah. together. Yeah. It's cool. And then how long do, were, did you guys have a go with that band? Like, were you guys doing tours and shows? I, he, I was a hired gun and, um, he, <laughs> ha, he fired me like three years later. Um, why did he fire you? Um, well, we had a, we had a tryst. What's a tryst? We had a moment. Oh. And then, um, and then I was like, I really th I want to pri I want to prioritize the band and I want the band to work out like yeah, and I really yeah. care about the music and da, da, da. and so I what an idiot he was so cute and talented yeah I broke up with him and uh and I don't know I don't know So then 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 you had to yeah. leave the band Yeah yeah and then um drama So what did that what kind of drama did that cause Just Nello drama just like you know a very formally like they invited me to to lunch the band he brought the whole band like and a band were, lunch yeah and then the the supplemental <laughs> reason which is probably uh uh more justifiable than a uh, romant romantic fallout is uh that sometimes he said that sometimes i would improvise and then go off script and uh yeah no shit yeah i did that so yeah I, well sorry no that's okay <laughs> that's okay that was that was in your so, past and but like yeah and i and and it was actually pretty apt that like huh like yeah i'm going off script because i've been playing in this band for three years like right you do that yeah of everyone course. does that yeah yeah so uh as far as like during shows or whatnot yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you're a musician, of course. You're so, gonna so, so then um, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll start my own band where I'm the boss. And that's kind of how Gothic Tropic. Right. Is. That's yeah. awesome. And then you mentioned, didn't you do stuff for, with Beck as well? Yeah. Um, how did that how did that occur? Yeah, because I'm a fan of I'm a fan of. Beck. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah, um, great musician. Yeah. Uh, well, um. A couple of years ago, I um, I work with Eric Bailey on guitar stuff, tech things, and mm -hmm. he's a he set up pedal boards and guitars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Just a wizard, and um, he works with Beck too. And he, uh, I guess, just asked, "Would you want her to audition?" And he, I guess he checked oh. out stuff and was like, "Yeah, ask her to audition yeah. for the last record cycle, which was Colors." 
What, what was so, that? What was that nerve wracking? What was that like? Where, where well, was he I? called me. I was. He was. Do you want to audition for Beck? I was like, Yeah, I'm not gonna wait, wait, get it. Be- wait, Beck called you? No, Eric. Oh, okay, because that would have been a different story if Beck called you. But yeah. he was just like, Yeah, just send like some videos. So I sent like four or five videos of me playing and singing on different instruments. There was like keys, and I played like I don't know, go it alone on guitar. Yeah, <clears> yeah, whatever it was. And then they're like, Yeah, can you come in tomorrow? I was like. Yeah, I'm not going to get it, but yeah, of course, I'm going to come in. So that was <laughs> so probably a good attitude because you didn't expect <laughs> anything. Yeah. Yeah. How and many other people were auditioning during this time? I don't know. You don't even know, don't but know. they chose you. Uh, Obviously, they did. So, and then, <laughs> and when, but I, when I got there, it was just so, well, it was like Jason Faulkner, who I'm already a fan of, guitarist, mm-hmm. um, artist, producer, Roger Manning on keys, like Dwayne Moore, Chris Coleman, who's just like a legend drum, yeah. you know, uh, in, in the yeah. drum world. Um, so it was really fun. It was kind of just walking into rehearsal and we did um, Hard as a Drum on, I was just playing keys and singing and just, he was just singing. So it was just us. Wow. So it was being watched by like, I don't know, 12 people and then plus like tech people on the wings and Whoa. sound engineer in the live r- or in yeah. the uh, control room and oh my goodness so and then so what did that after that moment when you got the gig like what did that entail did you go on tour or what do you do mm-hmm. select uh select shows or how did that work yeah so we we toured everywhere um it basically except um yeah we we didn't make it to italy yeah or Spain, but yeah. everything else. Everything <laughs> else. So you went to London. You went to Germany. Yeah, all through Europe, UK. France, yeah. Um, Asia at all? Uh huh. Where in Asia? We went to Japan. We went to Osaka and Tokyo. What and then we took the train through. Uh, bu- 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 Pass by Mount Fuji. Oh, okay. And Kyoto. Nice. What about Korea? We haven't been. To, I didn't go to Korea. Oh. <laughs> I know. Korean, so. I know. So bet get with the, get with the program. You know what I mean. I did check out. Oh, wh- I, I've but always wondered. This. I would love to. Yeah, you would love it. You would love Korea. What's Beck like? He's he's funny. mysterious. He is. Uh huh. Beck. Uh huh. No way. I love that you don't. Yeah. No, because he he's so smart. Quiet. Well, in what ways is he funny? That's so funny. I don't know. I. Like, I mean, a- any time <laughs> my sidekick on the tour was kind of like Alex Lilly. She's actually g- recommend uh, hanging out with her because she's an amazing uh, musician. She was on she's the gig, o- she's too. Wel- she's welcome here. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, great. Yeah. Write her name at the end. Okay. Yeah, she's always welcome. Yeah. So so we were we were goofing around a lot and, you know, Jason and, and, um, Jake Sinclair, who was on the same riser. So yeah. What, what define what a riser is in the a music riser, well, yeah. What's a riser on the stage is the stage on top of the stage Stage on top of the stage. Okay. Yeah. So it was that grand. It's pretty grand. Yeah. How many, how many musicians on that stage during with the riser? Beck in the middle, in the mid, he's usually in the middle, right? There's, there was Jason over here, mm-hmm. Dwayne over here, mm-hmm. Chris, and then there was me, Jake, uh, Alex, Roger. Oh, cool. Yeah. Eight total. Eight total. Yeah. For wow. colors. Yeah. Now, like, what was the tour life like with Beck? Did you guys have a tour bus? Or what were, like, the accommodations like as far as the way you were treated? As yeah, far? it was so, really nice. It's, so you had a tour bus and everything? Yeah. And then you had your own little little uh, bunk. bunk that slotted, that, that yeah. little um, coffin bunk thing? Yeah. Yeah. And then did you have a TV in there as well? Sometimes. Yeah. What about shower? Did, was there a shower and toilet on, Sometimes. on the bus? Sometimes a shower. Mostly, yeah. most of the time there's a shower. Yeah. Depends on different buses in different countries have different standards. Give me an example of that. What do you mean? God. Okay. So in the U.S., the buses expand when you're parked. Yeah. So you have a little bit more room. And then the ones in U.K. and Europe are like stacked, like double-deckers. 
Oh, there's double deckers. And they don't expand. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one bus where we had like an observation window that was at the front Whoa, of the top. That's so so cool. going through the Netherlands or whatever is just so beautiful. What was your favorite destination that you gone to touring or whatnot? Oh, man. I've never been to Europe. Okay, this is funny. I, I, I love Mexico City. Mexico City. I know it's so Hell close. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is it about Mexico City that that you? Like? I would just I would live there. You would live in Mexico City. Yeah. Is that beautiful? I just think I I liked how I liked the 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 energy and the yeah um, the people were really nice and the food is so good and the yeah. culture is really good. Yeah. Everyone dresses nice. In Mexico Everyone City. Everyone looks really hot. In Mexico City. Yeah. Okay. And it's interesting because you see there's a lot of history there. You see like the French influence Mm -hmm. and then you see, so it's sort of like some parts sort of look like tropical Paris. Whoa. It's interesting. Yeah. That's a dark past, but it, it's makes the architecture. It's amazing. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't think I've gone. I would love to go one day. Yeah. Yeah. And the mezcal was so good, mezcal. What, what's that? What, describe that. What is that? Is that mm-hmm. a dish or something? Or? It's it's a smoky tequila. My food and beverage friends are gonna think I'm butchering this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a smoky tequila. That's so like it's alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Smoky tequila. Yeah, I don't or, drink anymore. Or the tacos were really good. Yeah, yeah. What were the tacos? Yeah, were? the yeah, tacos. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, in her mind, she's like, oh, he doesn't The drink. tortillas were so tacos, good. Yeah. So what, the shrimp tacos, Italian. the asada, yeah. the pollo, like what? what so they had it yeah, all. Yeah, it was just so good. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. But also, um, man, I love Amsterdam and like. Yeah, I want to hear about that. Like I, I've always, want, I've never been to Europe, but I've heard so many awesome things about Amsterdam, Netherlands. Yeah. Well, so Amsterdam's interesting. It's, it's, there are all the, it's a sort of a web of canals that are surrounding the city and it's gorgeous. Yeah. There's more canals than Venice, I think. That's what's up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And everything you just can kind of just walk around and find stuff to do. And, uh, did you eat mushrooms out there? Can't you buy like mushrooms? I didn't. Or no. like, but you get weed. weed yeah, you get yeah. weed. So you can just walk anywhere in there. Yeah. What was the weed like? How was it different? The weed out there opposed to like Cali weed. Oh, it's yeah, it's it's not uh, strong at all. No. You but would think that I've always yeah, heard. Cause you would think that'd be like strong because I don't know why I would. I've heard maybe stories. because the the like the the uh, tourist culture is like ha <laughs> ha, mm-hmm, and then it like. Makes you think the weed's real good. But yeah, 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 yeah. It's like if I, I mean, I don't. I'm sober now, but if I were to go there, I would at least try um, maybe a little bit of mushrooms and maybe walk around. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe go to some art museums. Yeah. So what? So what were you doing out there, like on your days off, on your hiatuses from tour? Like, what what kind of fun activities were you doing uh, over we there? We would find. Yeah, we would find museums and galleries and like just swap recommendations restaurants we'd always like to find restaurants that had like basically just good protein and vegetables like farm to table stuff because like on the road um usually this was this was very nice because it's beck and he's nice he's a nice fancy gentleman yeah um who gets to eat good food in the catering because yeah. you would think he's earned be, it you would think is he a vegan or like you would th- I, no. I don't know, for some reason i think i thought he was a vegan but just like healthy delicious food like food that isn't like mns or whatever yeah. you know so because on my tours it's not like that whatsoever it's so completely opposite as so i want i like finding the f- like restaurants that it at least simulates something that i would cook at home yeah because otherwise we're just eating just garbage like gas station food yeah but and this is bratty to say like even european gas station food is 
150% better. Really? Than, yeah. Oh, like yeah. In, what, in what ways? What do you they got? You could get... You could go. I've never in. been there. I'm just curious. Like, yeah. What do they got there? It's amazing. Okay. There's a there's a truck stop like in Wales or something that yeah. has, um, it's like gourmet like stuffed bell peppers. Like everything's like laid out like a like a Whole Foods hot Whoa. bar. But it's like, oh, like uh, yeah, just really good stuff. What kind of beverages do they have that they don't have here? beverages they or they'll candy. even have at a at a okay at a at a european gas station they'll have chia seed water what yeah damn that's so cool it's so sophisticated i've never had chia. i didn't even think that existed chia seed so water? fancy what else what other kind kinds like, of stuff like their soda would be like sparkling like they're they're like rose water yeah sparkling rose water like blood orange oh sparkling so like, this is this is this is crap yeah because we're drinking i just we're drinking Lacroix and bubbly this is crap this would be the low end stuff over there yeah this bottom stuff. shelf this is bottom shelf yeah sparkling water because they have like sage infused what yeah do they got ginger beer out there though yeah. no they got ginger beer yeah and it's probably way better huh it's like scottish oh my god it has a kick to it I yeah bet. what about their candies and their snacks and everything Ooh, they have like fun candies like taffy and like they got old-fashioned real- candy they got r- like real taffy. Yeah. Not like laffy taffy. I found a uh, I found a candy uh I found a candy bar that looked like a like a bespoke shaving kit. What? It was the product design was so gorgeous and oh. elegant and like classy. It was like $20 I bet though. No, it was like oh. the the like royalty is like novelty. Well, they and call so it like a, posh. Would it be considered yeah, posh? Yeah, it's like a posh wrapper. So, how much would that cost me if I were in, over there in Wales? Oh, if you buy a bunch $5? of those in Wales and go to Brooklyn to your local like um like, like corner store, like general store like that's like it? called like oak oak in mill or something yeah you could slang it for like 12 bucks a candy bar no it's that good it it's all about the packaging but what about the the what it tastes like i didn't taste it (laughs) so you're paying for the packaging i thought you were gonna say they have like different types of chocolate and or they love uh they love their cadbury eggs describe describe because a lot of my viewers might not know what a cadbury egg. cadbury egg (laughs) Yeah, Nestle, Nestle, Nestle bought it out. Right, but they're the yolk. It was like that creamy. It's a chocolate egg with a creamy filling. Right? Yeah, like a, like a yellow creamy. Yeah, yeah. like but, but like buttermilk cream. Oh, yeah, so they got their own the real yeah. Cadbury egg. Yeah, yeah. God, that's mm. a shame. Nestle took over the world, huh? Yeah, they're buying, they're buying everything. Yeah, yep. Nestle chocolate. Yeah. Do they so make yeah. crunches? Crunch Nestle? Nestle Crunch? Yeah, yeah. that's Nestle's. Yeah. I yeah. used to God, love dude, those. I want to like kid. I want to eat some chocolate and snacks I right know. now. You're making me hungry. What other yeah, this is this is I admit you may, you're making me want to go to Europe like it's so beautiful. Like where do I, if I were to go anywhere, let's say I had a month off and I had enough money, where would you say, "Hey Steve, mm-hmm. Stevie, you should go here." Like where in Europe w- would it be would be a good time for me? Ooh, go to, go to like I haven't done this, but this is something I want to do. Yeah. Like, go to like Santorini or some kind of like beachy. Santorini? Yeah, like Greece or like. Greece? Southern Italy. Yeah. And do like a, like have like a boo trip. Yeah. And like look at the ocean and it's so beautiful. Yeah. You know what? I think of, you know, rest in peace, Anthony Bourdain, but. I used to love his show because I I'd, I'd vicariously like live through like you know what I'm saying because he would like visit like Morocco or I you know, know he would taste the food in each of these places like mm. so but like uh, Morocco I like like Greece yeah yeah been to Italy? yeah yeah because you are you're you have Italian roots right you're yeah you know, Peru Peruti 
Della Peruti. Della de Peruti. Peruti. De Peruti. I was recently taught how to say my name. Okay, let's let's hear it. Uh, by a by an Italian woman. Let's hear it. She said, Cecilia della Peruti. Cecilia della Peruti. Yeah. Yeah. So are your so are your where are your are your fo- both folks in this from the same region or my my dad's side of the family is they're from a place called Madaloni. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of near Naples, yeah, southern Italy. Okay. And then my mom's side of the family's from Poland and Ireland. Okay. Uh, so I'm Polish Italian. Polish Italian. Yeah. Have you been to Poland as well? No. But you've been. When's the last time you went to Italy? Actually, just recently. I just got back from uh, a tour where I was. Uh, we were in Milano. Okay, well, what's what's it what's it like going out there? Uh we I only got to see the drive from Switzerland from Locarno to Italy. Mm-hmm. And then I was unfortunately kind of tethered to the venue all day. Then we mm-hmm. went to the hotel, then we took a flight the next morning. What was that for? What, what yeah. Was that for? I was yeah, I was actually I was just playing bass for an artist named uh, Ali X. And she was opening for Marine and the Diamonds. Oh, cool. So it was very pop, big shows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, when you say big, how big are you? Are we talking like a thousand people, 500 people? Um, Like, well, we, we the first show was at Hollywood Bowl. That's huge. I don't know how many people that That's is. That's a lot of people. That's a big venue. But then in Europe, it sort Hollywood. of translates to uh, either an arena or large theater or something like that. What and are then they'll like yeah. cheat the arena? They, they're American artists, but yeah. that are big. And yeah. Actually, Marina's um she's Greek and Welsh. Yeah. Yeah. Are you and then how how do people how are they receptive differently towards me? Like, do they appreciate music more when you're out there opposed to because certain Americans are real picky as far as there's so many different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's just t- town to town. I mean, as some actually, I think Tilburg was like. Where's Tilburg? Tilburg is in the Netherlands. Okay. And they were really loud. I could hear them through my like noise canceling yeah, in your monitors. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's it's a hard barometer because sometimes like the all the rooms are different. You can't tell who's Right, right, right. <laughs> um now I heard this um just through the grapevine. It, does Europe have their own like can can a musician like just tour within Europe and like not even go to the States? Oh. Like, like, don't they have, like, their own festivals? Like, I heard, like, oh, France. They have, their they festivals have their are circuit. way better than... In what know. ways? The food. The food. The catering. Okay. Uh, the the ambiance. What like, do you, What do you mean by that? Just the way... They set up the backstage area, and they don't, they don't like, go over capacity. So, like, you can walk around the festival and not be, like, shoulder to shoulder and... Yeah, the, I mean, it's just the, the nature is so beautiful. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Hmm. What other uh, bands have you played with? So you said you played with Zach and... Yeah, yeah, what other bands so have the you played with? So the last one, yeah. So last one was bass for LEX. Before that was Beck. And I was, um, that was for a couple of years. I was on guitar and s- singing harmonies and doubles and stuff. And then I played like a like a Dan Electro sitar guitar oh, on that's Loser. So cool. That was pretty fun. Yeah. And I had a conga solo. Yeah. That 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 song really hit it off on MTV. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That I think that was the main one that he like, broke broke. That, could, yeah. yeah. Loser. Great. And out of uh, out of all the Beck albums, like well, what a- album resonates with you? Like Mutations oh, uh, is yeah. my favorite Beck album. Oh, I don't he has so many sea change mutations. Odile. It's so See, there's funny. so many different ones, but uh, I, I always wonder. It that changes I'm, in my moods too because yeah, he's there's got depressing. So many t- yeah, sea change is very depressing and more melancho- <laughs> like melancholy. Well, so is mutations though. In a way, it's there's this dark. I don't know. Depressing mood I I think every this was before I met him. I've just always admired him as an artist. I yeah. think he just has the dream career. 
Yeah. And 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 can traverse genre and maintain his voice, his singular identity is never yeah. I mean it's just and, and especially because he can do like something like I I was going to say like god I love sex laws. Okay, I don't I don't know. It's really funky with that. and oh, like Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um he but yeah, kinda, so he kind of kind of he could rap too a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could rap and sing. He could do it all, right? He used to he used to break dance on like cardboard boxes and what? Yeah. So he's he just multi talented. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I worked at Amoeba and uh, I rang him up and I was like stuttering. Oh. Yeah, I was so nervous. I rang him up and I think wasn't he married to God? Uh, God, he was married to something. Giovanni Rib- somehow a uh, Rabisi maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. Giovanni Rabisi's sister. Yeah. yeah okay um before that i um i was playing oh yeah i played guitar for charlie xcx for a couple shows okay what, um, kind, what kind of music is that she's like okay. pop um there are so yeah. many because she's she writes for other artists too so there's so her artist i don't know I mean, now there's so many um, newer songs than this, but Boom Clap was probably the... Or newer like, single? Yeah, and then like, Boys, Boys. It was like got like super viral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, I'm so... Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and then before that, I played Keys for Borns. And then before that, I played mostly Keys gigs. It's funny. Yeah, what kind of keyboard do you got? I don't even own one. You don't own a key- They just provide no. the keyboard? Yeah. Is there any way, because I know Heather Leather from, from my band, uh, she was she gets sponsored by like either like foot pedal companies or picks. Yeah. You know, like, guitar is, yeah. it, I, I, that's covered on guitar land, but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that a possibility where a keyboard company like Yamaha could like, uh, like just, you could get sponsored by yeah, Korg or like Yamaha or something? I suppose it's possible. Yeah. But. I don't have the. Uh, okay. So if a Korg or Yamaha. Pedigree this, to warrant. Uh, yeah, reach out to Gothic Tropic. <laughs> sure. I'll take it. She, she could use a Yamaha Korg sponsorship. Use a Nord Stage 2. Yeah. How do you adapt to that? Because each keyboard has different sounds, and uh, you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of the newer ones, you can just um, you can just download your own sounds, and you, it'll uh, wait, translate onto the keys. Mm-hmm. What? Yes. With through like a memory chip or something. Yes. Like that? Oh my goodness. And so you can emulate the record by literally ripping the MIDI information from the record there you go there you go um i actually didn't do that like i i, I programmed all the sounds myself just copy sound matching mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you could do that okay yeah and so like what uh, do you record your own like like home recordings as well like do you, yeah like, and then what do you record on and like where could people like hear i some use of your recordings yeah so i i mean i i demo out all my demos either by myself or with friends or with the co-writer, whoever mm-hmm. it is. If I'm by myself, I'm using Logic. And oh, Logic Pro. Yeah. Okay. I'm not the most proficient engineer in the world. Right. So, so, so as long as the idea, you capture well, the idea. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And then um, I... I'm also, I also produce for other artists, so... Oh, you do? So, yeah, just doing that um and um when i record gothic tropic i get the idea out and then i take it to a studio producer with a studio who can yeah. elevate it to the to the next yeah level. yeah but i'm actually uh i got my first mixing credit first co-production oh, credit on what, on what project um it's a song that i did with um uh <laughs> nate lots he changed his project name, so I don't want to say what it was, but his name's Nate Lotz, but he play, he plays drums with Halsey, mm-hmm. and we did a song together um, called Fucked Up. Oh, cool. Where can people hear that or download it? It's on SoundCloud. Okay, it's on SoundCloud, and what? what? And I mixed it. You mixed it, so it's under Gothic Tropic SoundCloud? No. Uh, God, I don't even know why I said this. Well, what's the name of the song again? It's yeah. called Fucked Up. I'll Fucked post up. about it. Uh, 
on my Instagram feed, so it's right, so right, it's right, like right, right. Uh, close at hand. So where could but where could Gothic Tropic stuff is all on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud. F- 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 uh, I'm uh, Napster. So uh, all of the the streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah. What well, do you have your own Bandcamp as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is it is it is it even connected to my PayPal anymore? <laughs> I definitely do have a band camp. But it's under Gothic Tropic. You just know, just you stream know. on Spotify. Just give me the streams. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. want it's like what, what are your thoughts on that? Because I ask other musicians, what are your thoughts on like the, Unless you're selling massive units of music, it's yeah. it, I'm not like it's almost like the streams in, in, in the stage of my career are a little bit more like um good for optics uh yeah. than g- giving me a percentage of my album back to me right it doesn't matter i've already spent the money right just enjoy it <laughs> i don't a, care what about like licensing like through like ASCAP that, and stuff like yeah like, that I'll works talk about that like cause that, that helps because I, I know a lot of other musicians like that they might be doing bad but then like a, a like an indie movie might use their song totally. or something how, how does that work like like uh, that i have a publisher um yeah, his name is Jonathan Palmer, um, and that's been working, uh-huh. so that's good. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was just in Shrill. Mm-hmm. Um, what is that? What is that? Shrill is uh, A.D. Bryant's new show. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know. Okay. And then you have a song on that. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And so stuff like that. And I also, that's a Gothic Tropic song. Mm -hmm. Um, And Gothic Tropic songs are usually uh, licensed for, um, um, I did a U.S. bank commercial. Oh, awesome. Uh, How does that work? like, Like, as far as, did you have, did they just find your song or did you like? I think that was from my, through my label. Okay. And so, so different things like that, they'll that just, helps. I don't know. Yeah. They yeah, find me helps. and then they, they want to license a song for random stuff. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And are you, what are you working on currently? Do you have like a solo project you might be working on? And so I have, uh, I've just finished one record, mm-hmm. um, for Gothic Tropic. Mm-hmm. That is something I did with, I wrote with, um, I wrote with a bunch of people, uh, Max Hirschenau mm-hmm. and Blue McOrie. And um, I produced that with uh, Carlos de la Garza okay. and John Joseph. Mm-hmm. And I don't know when that's coming out, but I just... How many songs do you guys have so far? Ten. Ten. So That's ready to go, right? Ten. It's ready to go. Yeah. We're going to meetings. Okay. So what does that entail, like going to meetings? Like with We're labels? going to meetings and we're going to see who wants to give me money for it. Right. And allow me to tour it, allow me to push it and promote it. Um, and then, how does that work? Do you like what? How does what does a meeting entail? Like you and the the other music creators go to an office, and I'm the creator in the meeting, and they're the people with the money um, who want to do to trade. The trade, yes, services essentially. You provide the music. They they disperse yeah. it out. Yeah. I I I retain ownership since I paid for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they license it off me to use in their world and right, you know, right. however it works. It depends on the deal. I don't know. I'm, I'm figuring out, uh, who I want to sign with. So mm-hmm. there and are what, different, what? different deals. And who would you like to sign with? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, whoever likes me the most. Yeah. Or the best offer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair yeah. Enough. Yeah. Tour support is something you can negotiate in your deal. You could say like, what about hey, merch? instead yeah. of, yeah, yeah. As well, yeah. Like in the past um, with other labels, um, I've been like, hey, instead of giving me an advance, can you just pay for the tour for the album, for the touring cycle? Yeah. So, I mean, I would have... Sp- I would have needed to, the advance isn't free money. Yeah. It's your, it's you your working it capital. And then you have to pay it back, right? Uh, like your advance or no? They'll make it back on okay, other on stuff. Tour, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like some, sometimes an artist gets like a big advance and like, let's buy a yacht. It's like, no, that's no. your working capital. Yeah, that's so you don't have to get album. a job. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I've heard of these 360 deals as well. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't agree with that because 
I think that with the merch, you guys should keep up. 360 deals, they, 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 they get revenue from like, like the recording and the sale, but then they also like, they have their hands in your merch and your record, like records and yeah, your shirts. Yeah, it's like extra stuff that's extra a little stuff. bit not yeah. chill. I mean, why? I, I don't think that's fair because, you know. It just depends. Like fair is so relative when they're leveraging different things that you yeah. could be like, I don't, nobody knows about me, but you could break me, so it might be worth it to to give them a percentage get the of your slice merch. of humble pie right, on that, right, and right. then then at least then at least if you take it, then maybe you'll have a platform to like do your own thing later. Right, so. right, right. Now, as far as merch and all that, do you do you like do you like um, come up with your own concepts as far as merch? Like, how, yeah. who, who does all your merch? I do. You do? Like, you do all the designs and everything? Yeah. And th I, I mean, I, yeah, I do all my merch, but um, as far as like producing merch, because I'm, I, I, I'm, my income is what pays for Gothic Tropics. So mm -hmm. I have to check off the priorities. Like, I just paid for two records. And uh, if we get a label involved, merch is like chump change. So great. Yeah. Right. Done. Right. Right. That's so interesting. So it just depends yeah. how I want to do it. <laughs> do you have any advice for like, because there, there a lot, a lot of these viewers and listeners are like aspiring artists like yourself. Like, do you have any like tips or like advice to give like up and coming uh, musicians slash artists? Yeah. Well, it's important to um, find an attorney that you trust. Um, <sighs> probably yeah. first uh that and then oh yeah and then management and book or, and booking agent all of that it can be vetted by your person <clears throat> right right and yeah. then as far as having ownership of what you create how like uh how, means how you have to you can't borrow money you can't borrow like in for investments you like have to invest, invest in your own thing if you want to own it if you want to own it or you have a special daddy deal well, what's it what's a dad <laughs> Wait, what's what's a special dad i don't deal? know <laughs> some like, people have what daddy pays for it yeah so. either you're a trust fund kid or you have oh, like a, right, i don't know right because right. i'm sure there's i'm not that you, but right right but you're saying like a label sometimes will pay to make the album but then they yeah well but yeah. no sometimes they don't own it right. it depends on how uh much they like you <laughs> right right <laughs> but but to retain your stuff, yeah, like you, yeah, of course you want to retain your IP and you don't want to um, like be in a situation where you can't control what's happening to your own music. Mm -hmm. That that kind of like plays into like, yeah, find a good attorney, attorney who can guide you on all these decisions, business decisions, because artists, I've met artists who can't even tie their own shoes, but they're brilliant and they're in like... Business? no no oh, just, brilliant just with their in their in their art in their and art. their music right but they can't pay their taxes like so you so if you're like that um i'm a little bit like that so i <laughs> i've learned a lot like i forced myself to learn a lot about the industry and how it all works right. and how it all plays together so because the landscape is so different now because before you had cds you had physical sales right so how do you monitor i don't remember that well, you know, like t but <laughs> records, but how, do, how does one monitor, like, let's say you have a couple songs on Spotify. How do you monitor, like, the streams and who's listening and where it's coming from? And uh, is there, like... You're going to want to find... You could do this through Sound Exchange. You can go on Sound Exchange. And what do, what do, they, what do they do? And they, what do they provide? track all of that for you, and they collect... So, like... Yeah, so this would be like either a wall or uh, yeah, or any sort of DSP services. They'll mm -hmm. track it for you, mm -hmm. and um, and then they send you a check. Okay, is that who are you with them? I'm with um, yeah. I did. I put out the last song with a wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. I'm with BMI. Oh, okay. Yeah. So publish for publishing. Yeah. Yeah. How does one get publishing? Like if you're an up and coming um, artist, like. I, I don't, I don't remember how this happened. Now. This <laughs> when, Like I met the first person I met from BMI. Her name was Fabi. Yeah. This was like years ago. And she was like, I'd like to represent you. And I was like, 
okay. Oh, you love that so, was great. So yeah. So how did she find you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I've been I had been <laughs> lamenting like not having a manager and an agent for years. Like it's yeah. hard. It's not the it's not fun. Yeah. You, you you feel like am I not getting the hint? Uh so Yeah. But then it happens and So with you it just it just all worked out. It's like been a lot of organic growth because I have a humble logistic operation here. Yeah. So yeah, just hey man, I admire that. Thank the, you. I admire the hustle. Oh, thanks. And this, I hope this helps out. I hope that <laughs> that's a little sarcastic. I hope that, I hope that the viewers and listeners watch this and they support you more. Oh. And that's why the Stevie Weeby show exists is because of people like you, you know, so Thank people you. can get informed of about musicians and artists and and magicians and comedians and that's why we're all here to, to have this platform mm. now like we're we're running low on time uh we would like to take this time to promote your website and your social media your faith what, whatever you want to uh promote okay okay i'm cecilia my instagram is at gothic tropic and i treat it as like a diary dump mm-hmm and then also I'm on Twitter at Goth Trop Nonstop. Mm-hmm. I am playing a show tomorrow night, actually. I don't know. This, it's is, not, nice. yeah, yeah. this is not going to be uploaded. <coughs> in time. Rewind. Okay. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, playing uh, in LA at some point. Just uh, keep in touch with me and I'll keep posting about what I'm up to. Yeah. Um, you can listen to... I just put out a single called Drunk on a Rhythm. Okay, where can people listen to that? Spotify, iTunes, whatever you like to listen to. Gothic Trop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. G-O-T-H-I-C-T-R-O-P-I-C. But there's a space between Gothic and Tropic. Yes. Yeah. Gothic space Tropic. Tropic. Okay. Hey, it was an honor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, is there any, yeah, is there your merch? Yeah. Your, your merch or your store? Yeah. yeah. God, I don't have a merch store. <laughs> I, w- I would love to promote the fact that I'm about to put out an album that I'm really proud of. And it's going to be good. So as long as they follow you on Insta. Yeah. yeah. You're going to update them yeah. in the process. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I've already trickled out drunk on a rhythm so see if you yeah. like that mm-hmm. how many songs and like are you close to finishing that i j- i'm it's done it's finished it's being mixed 10 songs oh, i thought you were going to record more on top of the 10 we're maybe. done it's, you're done we're it done it just needs to be mastered and mixed and exactly okay and so check, go check out instagram instagram at gothic tropic yes g o t h i c space T R O P I C. Yes. Gothic Tropic. Thank you. That was easy, right? Yeah. It's all done. It's amazing. Yeah, okay. You hit it out the ballpark. <laughs> okay, with that being said, uh, thanks again to our sponsor for this episode, Scentbird. Um, there's no little Ray's World this week. Uh, um, uh, we have a Patreon attached to the show. If you want to support the, the podcast slash show, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Um, there's a website um, attached to this. It's called uh, the Stevie Weeby Show at uh, www.stevieweebyshow.com. The Instagram for this show is Instagram slash Q U A N G O U. You can check out my Bandcamp as well, StevieWeeby.bandcamp.com. Um, the reason why I'm taking a hiatus or L- Lil Ray's taking a hiatus is I'm working on music EP also. Mm-hmm. So I want to focus solely on that. So, cause, uh, Lil Ray takes some time. So apologize. He will be back though. Ladies and gentlemen, Lil Ray is not going anywhere. So, and then check out some more content on the YouTube channel where we have vlogs, puzzle videos, uh, Stevie on the streety, check that out. Uh, there's a PO box video where I unbox packages that you guys send in. If you want to send in packages, send your packages to Stevie's PO box at 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, PO box 1391, LA, California, 90093. Support the homies podcast, uh, L- Losco Projects. 
Necro Electric, Riffin with Griffin, and W F E, and check out Hollow's Grove, directed by Craig Efros. There's no low raise. It was an honor having you. Thank Another you pound. For having me.